Bob Probert, Derek Bugard, Reggie Fleming, Rick Warren, and recently Steve Monitor all have one thing in common. After their death, researchers have found out that they all suffer from chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE. CTE is seen in sports with repetitive brain trauma, such as in hockey and football, and can be caused by concussions. Recently, concussions have been a popular topic of discussion since over two dozen NHL players have filed a class action against the NHL, which can end up costing the league $13.5 million. Today, we are joined by experts to get a greater insight on concussions. We have Patrick and Vichy over here. Yeah, thanks for having us. Well, to begin, uh, Vichy, uh, could you just describe what a concussion is? I think Patrick would agree when I say that the most general way concussion can be defined is as a traumatic brain injury that's characterized as a blow to the head. Patrick, in your own word, you immediately see when athletes suffer concussion. How does the athlete react? Well, the signs are dependent on the severity, whether it be a grade 1, 2, or 3 concussion. In a lot of these cases, the athletes will experience some of these symptoms, including disorientation, dizziness, and poor concentration. Also, most people think that in order for an athlete to suffer a concussion, they have to lose consciousness for an extended period of time. But that's not true, because an athlete suffering a grade 1 concussion does not lose consciousness. That explains why some incidences are not reported, because athletes are unaware that they actually have a concussion, and they continue to play. Patrick, you mentioned the three types of concussions, which are grade 1, 2, and 3. Can you just elaborate on those? Yeah, absolutely. So with the first type, grade 1, we consider it to be a milder form of the concussion. And oftentimes, while consciousness isn't lost, amnesia can occur for up to 30 minutes after this incident. Oftentimes, when we take scans of the athletes, we find that their brain function does appear to be normal. Um, however, an athlete experiencing a grade 2 concussion or a more moderate form of this can experience uh, loss of consciousness for up to even 5 minutes. Um, oftentimes this is just for a few seconds, but uh, symptoms, other symptoms that can occur include amnesia for half an hour to 24 hours after the incident, confusion from days to weeks, as well as physical or behavioral impairments that can last for even up to months. However, grade 3 concussions are the most severe form of them and often occur to athletes who have suffered severe and multiple traumatic brain injuries over the past few years. Oftentimes, they can lose consciousness for over 5 minutes and the post-traumatic amnesia can occur for up to years. In addition, these types of concussions in CT scans and MRI scans often show things like contusions, swelling in the athlete's brain, and hemorrhages as well. So, regardless of the type of concussion, those seem like really serious symptoms. Vichy, after diagnosing the athlete with a concussion, uh, what are the next steps that you recommend they should take? Cases, it depends on the severity of the concussion and if the athletes have had any prior experiences, especially if the athletes have had an untreated concussion while suffering another. But in all cases, I advise the athlete to not return to play unless they are experiencing any symptoms. And when they do return, to take it slow and have a gradual increase of intensity. For contact sport, I recommend that the athlete wears a shirt saying no contact for coaches and teammates to be aware. It's always in the athlete's best interest to take a complete recovery before returning to play. Today, we've talked a lot about concussions regarding their signs, symptoms, and the different types. But I would like to know, along with parents and athletes watching, how can we prevent this from happening? especially in a contact sport such as hockey. In a contact sport, it is almost inevitable for concussions to occur, but athletes and coaches can do their part in reducing the number of incidences. First, it's necessary to understand how the concussion occurred, and this can be determined by looking at the games and practice tapes. In some cases, the players are using the wrong technique, or sometimes the coaches can improve their approach. Yeah, along with the players and the athletes, the sports leagues such as the NHL and NFL play a significant being able to prevent these concussions. The NHL has already made significant strides in trying to reduce the number of concussions, and this includes um, creating stricter rules in hits to the head, as well as creating an enforcement of a rule where players are required to spend 20 minutes in a quiet room after a potential concussion. However, there are still areas for improvement. For example, the NHL is going through a lawsuit because players aren't receiving the support after they retire from the league, and oftentimes these players have suffered from concussions. So there's definitely room for improvement when it comes to taking care of these injuries still. I hope today's broadcast has informed parents, athletes, and coaches to be more aware of concussions. And I would just like to thank Vichy and Patrick for taking the time to join us today. Yeah, thank you for having us. In a culture where playing while injured is considered tough, heroic, and taking one for the team. But in perspective, is it worth one's life? I'm Manu Sharma, reporting from Sports Center Live. Thank you for watching. For videos on other cool topics, don't forget to like and subscribe.